uh, gadget there. It's a deodorant stick with a rubber uh, strip on the end. It's, um, it's simulating an ultrasound probe. Kara has given birth to two seals while she's been here at the National Zoo. And our vet veterinarians were able to monitor her pregnancy by coming down every couple of weeks and doing an ultrasound. So our sea lions are also trained for the same behavior. <clears throat> Looks like we'll see what Sam's gonna do with got there next. She's gonna brush his teeth. Show his hand. How many of you brush your teeth every day? Okay, some of you didn't raise your hand, which means we have some other issues. But uh, these guys get their teeth brushed by us on a daily basis. Now that wouldn't happen out in the wild, obviously, but we want to make sure that their teeth and gums stay healthy while they're here with us. Also, if you were listening earlier, you would you would have heard that I said that these guys can live about 10 to 15 years longer than their wild cousins. So we want to make sure that they don't develop gingivitis. We also want to make sure that if we ever have an issue, that they're comfortable with us looking into their mouths using any kind of tools. So Gump there actually just had a tooth removed about a, two months ago. He was trained to hold a radiograph plate, just like he's doing for Sam right now with that frisbee. Uh, but Diana taught him to do that. He would hold a radiograph plate in his mouth. Our veterinary technicians could come down and get x-rays, and we were able to see that there was an issue with one of his teeth and it needed to come out. And so we were able to do that procedure very successfully. Sam is now also uh, simulating doing eye drops with Gunther. Uh, seals and sea lions can develop eye issues the same way that we do. They can have cataracts, they can um, develop glaucoma. So while they're here, we want to make sure that if we are ready to treat their eyes, that they're going to be comfortable getting eye drops and also compliant. You might have just seen Diana using a stethoscope on Cara. We bring out any kind of tool that we can that we think our veterinarians might use so that the animal will get used to it. So that when, they, when it is necessary, it's not a scary thing for them. We can also talk a little bit, oh, Sam's gonna do a real quick simulation. So these guys get vaccinations, just like we do. They are vaccinated yearly for rabies and distemper and West Nile. They sit great for it because we practice this every single day. So Sam doesn't have a needle on there, but she wants to make sure that Gunther's gonna stay still, that she can approach him from behind, and he's doing a great job. So he's gonna get a good reward for that. We do take blood from their rear flippers, which is Sam is concentrating on right now. Diana's doing the same thing, because sometimes an animal might feel more comfortable in the water. So we wanna be able to train those behaviors in different ways. So here you saw Gunther on land, and Cara right there in the water. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about the differences between seals and sea lions. As we've got Gunther up here on land, you may notice that he doesn't have any external ear flaps. We do, we have ear lobes. Seals don't have those. They just have a small hole in the side of their head that leads down into their ear canal. Now our sea lions have external pinna, so you can see those ear flaps on the sea lions. The seals also have very short front flippers. Sea lions have really big front flippers. In fact, sea lions can basically support all of their body weight on their front flippers. Our seals aren't that acrobatic. They really can't do that. So when they move on land, they kind of inchworm around or scoot on their bellies like you're seeing what they do. And when they swim, they use their rear flippers in a sculling motion to propel themselves through the water. Sea lions, on the other hand, because they have such big front flippers, use kind of like a flying motion underwater. It's very unique. There aren't any other mammals that swim that way. Seals also sound much different. So sea lions are the ones that are out on the west coast barking and yelling at each other. Um, seals make a variety of vocalizations, but whatever you heard, oh, Clara's doing hers now. Um, they can blow raspberries out of their nose. They can kind of do a whistling or a singing call. Um, so if you come to this pool and you start barking, you're at the wrong pool. That's sea lions down there. Seals also, <clears throat> The way they swim is a little bit different, and I said they use their rear flippers in a sculling motion, but they also will swim on their backs on the surface of the water, and that's because of the placement of their eyes on top of their head. So these guys have huge eyes that help them see in really dark water, and they have these very sensitive vibrisse whiskers on the side of their face. You can see that they're now kind of going upside down and giving a little bit of a wave. That vibrisse is very, very sensitive, about 10 times more sensitive than a cat or a dog, and they can actually feel the current of the water around them when fish are swimming by. Kara is almost, well, she is completely blind, and when she was first introduced to this pool, she navigated it just fine, because she, as she would start to approach a wall, she would feel the water come back at her, and she knew to turn so that she wouldn't bump into the wall. So they have many great adaptations uh, for living. <laughs> and it looks like oh, we have another seal who might be coming out, but she just decided not to. <laughs> Kia stuck her head out. 
Um, so we feed a variety of fish here. Um, Gunther gets about oh, 10, well, 22 kilos of fish, or 22 pounds of fish a day. Calorie-wise, it's probably about 11,000 calories of fish a day. So if you think about how many calories you eat a day, probably around 2,000, 3,000 maybe. He gets much more than that. At his biggest, he will weigh about 700 pounds. Right now, he's about 525, 550. You can make uh, choices in your daily lives to help animals here at the zoo and out in the wild by making sustainable food choices. So if you are going to the grocery store and you want to buy some fish, it's very highly recommend that you look at the Seafood Watch app. You can uh, download it on your phone or you can go to the website, seafoodwatch.org. They update that um, every so often. We'll give you sustainable seafood choices. So that's a really great way that you can help protect these animals in the wild. And as Guthrie brings back this frisbee, I will say that we've also trained these animals to retrieve objects in the pool. But we also encourage you to please use all the trash cans and the recycling, center, uh, recycling bins that you see around the zoo. If you see a piece of trash as you're walking, pick it up because a gust of wind could blow it into an animal exhibit. It can be very dangerous for these animals. And also, in your daily lives, recycle as much as you can because the more that we can reuse these items, the less we have to take from nature. Sam's gonna finish up Gunther and probably bring him into the back. We have two pools in the back, so these animals have a choice of where they want to be. So we're gonna see if he wants to come on back. And that's gonna conclude our demonstration for the day. If anybody has any questions, I'm gonna stand right here. I'll be happy to answer them for you. But I appreciate you coming and listening. It's a beautiful day outside, so please enjoy the rest of your day at the National Zoo. Thanks, everyone.